Welcome to your gospel here on Gospel for Grampia. Your gospel is all about making sure that wherever you come from, you'll be able to hear the gospel. This is your gospel in French. Jean chapitre 3 verset 16 Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son Fils unique afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse point mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. Your gospel aims to make the gospel available in languages from around the world. It's taken from John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Look out for more from your gospel at the top of the hour every hour on Gospel for Grampian. Listen. G4G.org.uk If you'd like to catch up with our podcasts, then it's podcast dot g four g dot org dot uk thank you for listening contact us our website is www dot g four g dot org dot uk email us info at g four g dot org dot uk you can follow us on twitter at gospel for grampian and you can like us on our Gospel for Grampian Facebook page. You can text us on 07733 421 385 or phone us 01224 898 008. Gospel for Grampian, Gospel Community Radio for North Scotland, living life to the full. Welcome along to the Community Elements Show, which uh, today we've uh, taken the station out, as indeed we should do. Uh, Jesus went out to the people, and we're going out uh, and uh, just standing with a great view of Aberdeen Harbour. And we've got uh, the control centre for the harbour just uh, opposite where I am. Uh, the harbour's really made up of about uh, three or four main bays. Uh, and including going up the River Dee, so I can see ships everywhere and the uh, Aberdeen City in the background. And then looking around more to the right, I can see the Beach Ballroom, the Towers of Seton, and then the Bridge of Don. And uh, we're going to be walking along. And the object of coming out here as much as anything else is to also, uh, while we go on with the programme, is to uh, hopefully be able to report on dolphin findings because uh, uh, right at the moment there's the Friday, Saturday and Sunday I believe the RSPB, the Royal Society for Protection of Birds is uh, out here and they're actually doing a dolphin watch as well uh, we have uh, bottlenose dolphins who come into the harbour here and uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to see and even photograph uh, some of the dolphins uh, and doing their display and uh, by way of displaying they'll display their fins uh, they'll also display by way of uh, uh, jumping out of the water, which they call breaching. Uh, so we're hoping to actually see some of that. So we're going to actually go on and uh, have a little walk down. And while we do that, uh, we're going to go on to Brian's Good News. Uh, for Brian's Good News, uh, Brian actually joined me at uh, the Credo Centre. And uh, so... Brian's good news comes from the Credo Center. A very good afternoon to you. Welcome along to this Community Elements show. And today to record Brian's good news, we've come through to the Cafe Credo and in one of the upstairs rooms. Hello, Brian. How are you? I am very good, Rob. And you? Good, thank you. Yes. And we're scaling the heights today to start off with. <laughs> it, not only are we on the first floor... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I was scaling the heights, and uh, for folks who were listening in from last week, I have to say uh, we received some very good feedback from future choices from the chairman, and uh, wow, it, for us it is a wow as well to receive such a nice feedback from people, and uh, just to to thank people always for their encouragement. 
we all need encouragement and I hope really that Brian's good news is going to be an encouragement to you today. You spoke about scaling the heights. This first story most certainly covers that. An Aberdeen man is feeling on top of the world after a gruelling 18-day trek on the world's highest mountain. Robert Strachan from Torrey laced up his hiking boots to scale 5,380 metres on Mount Everest's base camp to honour his late mother's memory. The 38-year-old was raising money for Roxborough House, where his mother, Nicola June Strachan, 66, spent her final days. Robert, a personal trainer, won the trip of a lifetime to Kathmandu through Evertrek, a travel experience agency. He said, I had been looking to do something different in my mom's memory after she passed away in June. My dad used to read from adventure books when I was younger and I've always been interested in exploring. So I thought this would be a good way to raise some funds. Roxburgh House is an excellent NHS facility that always went an extra leap for my family and especially mum in her last days. Before Robert took off for Nepal, he trained for about three months. He said, I would travel up to the Cairngorms and train for about four to six hours a day. Aside from the adventures of climbing to Everest Base Camp, Robert had to first touch down in what is widely considered to be the most dangerous airport in the world, Lukla. Robert said, Lukla has a very interesting airport. It's basically on a cliff. It was a bit nerve-wracking. Once on solid ground, Robert spent the first few days getting used to the weather and altitude sickness. We had enough breaks to acclimatise and get used to the altitude, he said. I was able to visit the nearby villages and local areas, which was great. For the trek itself, I wasn't sure what to expect. One night, it got to minus 20 degrees Celsius, and the inside window of our hut, it froze over. It was grim. There was a snowstorm the day we got to the base camp, and we had to head back down immediately. The trek was a good way to clear my head while doing something good for charity. And I couldn't have done it without my partner, Lucy Rowe, who was posting on social media for me and keeping the internet in my fundraising. Robert is now back in the Granite City. So far, the Tory resident has raised £1,500 out of the £2,000 he hopes to give to the NHS run the facility. To contribute to Robert's cause and find out more information, visit bit.ly forward slash 2kpnwzo. For most parents, persuading their children to take out the bin can be a challenge, but for little Noel Poole, it is the highlight of his week. The four-year-old loves refuse trucks so much he even has his own binman's jacket and insists on taking out the rubbish bag every Thursday. Now to celebrate his birthday, his buddies on the bins have treated him to a special visit. The youngster from Newton Hill was invited along to Port Lethen Housing Waste and Recycling Centre to meet his pals in the refuse collection team. During the VIP visit, he got to ride in a bin wagon and, to his delight, even tooted the horn. Mum Lisa said he was absolutely in his element. He loved every minute of it. It was a lovely thing for them to do. Noel has loved bin lorries since he was 18 months and would eagerly await the arrival of the team each week. As he got older, Noel would don a vis jacket and take out a food caddy to the waiting truck. Lisa said, Noel's two-year-old sister, Annabelle, doesn't like to be left out. So, on Thursdays, I had to make sure we had two food waste bags. The neighbours would be stood watching in fits of laughter each week. However, since Noel started nursery, he has missed the weekly afternoon rounds. So, the council arranged a birthday treat for him and Annabelle. Lisa said she and her husband, Craig, were delighted to take up the offer. She added, Annabelle likes the bin trucks, but Noel absolutely loves them. I can see he definitely has a career in mind for when he's older. 
An Aberdeenshire Council spokeswoman said, we're glad that they had a super day with all of us at the Waste Team. A social care charity today launched a £3.2 million campaign to build a state-of-the-art mental well-being centre in the heart of the city. Voluntary Service Aberdeen is calling on the generosity of the North East to help back its plans to build a 20-bed facility which will assist people living with a range of mental health conditions. The VSA Changing Lives campaign, which is being backed by the Evening Express, has already raised £2.1 million. It has also garnered the support of Scotland manager Alex McLeish, who has joined the campaign board, BP, Standard Life Aberdeen, Apache, the Robertson Trust and the A.G. Bain Trust. The facility will expand upon the charity's existing outreach support service. Kenneth Simpson, VSA's chief executive, said, This marks a historic day in VSA's 149-year history and reaffirms our commitment to the people of the North East. Together with the help of the people of Aberdeen and the tremendous support we have received to date, we can make this facility a reality and change the lives of the people who need our support for the better. The new facility, which a charity would like to build on the corner of Abergeldy Road and Holborn Street, will feature 20 in-suite bedrooms with a small kitchen area and lounge, a residential lounge, dining room, two relaxation rooms, a fully fitted kitchen, laundry room, office space and a garden area. Don's legend, Mr McLeish said, he was privileged to help. He said, I am delighted to be involved once again with VSA. I have tremendous memories of my association. Sir Alex Ferguson gave me the green light to be an ambassador for Lynn Moore School in helping raise funds. I feel so privileged to be able to help VSA's latest campaign, which will help so many people in such a caring and special environment. Evening Express editor Craig Walker said, We are delighted to be helping VSA once again in such a worthy, important cause. Tim Smith, Vice President of Communications and External Affairs for BP North Sea, said, BP is delighted to pledge our support to help raise funds for this fantastic project. This facility will make a material difference in changing lives for the better. VSA was established in March 1870 as Aberdeen Association for Improving the Condition of the Poor. Queen Victoria accepted an invitation to become patron and the reigning monarch has since held this position. Martin Gilbert, Vice Chairman of Standard Life Aberdeen said, I am very proud that Standard Life Aberdeen is partnered with VSA. Social care is crucial and the work VSA does for mental health in Aberdeen is hugely important. A nine-year-old has raised hundreds of pounds for a cancer charity after being inspired by her mum who has defied the odds to battle a brain tumour. Suzanne Davies was diagnosed in 2014 when the doctors gave her just 12 months to live. But five years on, Suzanne of Newton Hill is still going strong and her daughter, Lauren, nine, has raised more than £200 for Clan after the charity helped her and her family come to terms with the situation. Her mum continues to defy the odds, with her latest scan in February showing the tumour had not grown and she was still stable. Suzanne, 40, who lives with husband Owen, 46, and kids Max and Lauren, said, Proud isn't the word. She came to me and said, Mum, I want to do some fundraising because you've done so much. I want to do something. One of the councillors from Clan has been in to see her quite a lot and the good thing is she comes to the school. She's been amazing and really helped her understand in a good way based on play and talking. Lauren took it upon herself to organise a raffle to raise money for the charity and managed to get some prizes donated by Curry's PC World. Suzanne said, we ended up with them donating a pair of Sony headphones and a wireless speaker, which was great. And through raffle tickets, 
and other donations to the cause, Lauren managed to raise a total of £220, £114 through Newton Hill Primary School, where she is a pupil, and £106 from family and friends, and presented a cheque to staff at the charity. Lauren said she was surprised and delighted to have managed to raise so much. She said, it was very good. I was really happy. I thought I might get about £50. I decided to do it because Clan helped my family a lot and they're really nice people and they make our lives better. Now, we have a scripture text today taken from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brian, and uh, a very good and pertinent scripture for this Easter time. Yes. Where do I start? Well, it has to be on top of the world. <laughs> it's great that Robert Strachan wanted to do something for his mum, uh, that he's actually been, that he's done it, and having actually gone all the way up to the base camp uh, for Everest, I would hope that he really would be able to raise a lot more money. Yes, indeed. Because he's done a, a really great thing. Fantastic. But it's also done in memory of his, his mum as well. So it's two things. And that's really good as well. Um, I'm just thinking about the social care, uh, state of the art, and voluntary service Aberdeen to be able to build a 20-bed facility to assist people living with a range of mental uh, health conditions. It's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, the fact that uh, footballers are getting in on the act as well. Uh huh. Well, I mean, Alex McLeish has a, a very good history with Aberdeen Football Club and Scotland, so putting his name behind this should encourage many people to help donate. Yeah. So he is hoping a that great that service. That will continue, and uh, actually having the Queen as a uh, as a patron. I know it's also good, is not it? Uh, then we've got uh, the wee girl who raised a huge amount of well, a lot for her. It, it, for and, her, and that, that is a huge amount. That is a lot for her to be able to raise this amount uh, for for clan and actually get prizes donated by PC World as well. Excellent. So there's a lot of people to be praised today. Uh, hopefully this will encourage her to do uh, more in the future, but that's uh, really good. And then she's had a, she's got a good role model uh, indeed, uh, and, a, and a very good encouraging mum too. Oh, very definitely. <laughs> and then to finish off with uh, the little boy who loves big trucks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one bit that uh, tickled me here was, it spoke about the neighbours would be stood watching in fits of laughter every week, you know. I can imagine, but they were, the laughter wasn't at him. Uh, it was the joy that uh, they experienced through seeing somebody putting themselves out at the age of four. That's, that's brilliant. Uh, going and putting out the bins, I mean, normally you would say, oh, I want uh, X amount for putting the bins out today <laughs> and <laughs> whatever, but <laughs> uh, he, he putting the bins out, uh, and it, it's, it's good to have all this encouragement indeed from the council uh -huh. should, you know, they, they do that so it keeps them on the right road so they think and remember that the council are good guys who are going out uh, cleaning up, but to actually think about where you put your rubbish. Not on the ground, mm -hmm. not in a bush, but dog poo bins go into a dog poo bin, and rubbish either gets recycled or popped into the bin instead of... At all very important, isn't it? Yeah, so this is, I think, a, is a good message for the future, and it, it's great that he really likes doing what he does. Oh, he enjoys it very I, I much. I think he enjoys dressing up as well. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, I know I did. Well, yeah. When I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. I think we all do. Not that we had much to dress up with. <laughs> no, that's a great encouragement though, isn't it? Yeah. So let's hope that many other uh, kids will uh, follow his example. Yes. Uh, I can guarantee that many parents will 
point this out to their children and say, look here, you could do this for me. You know? Yeah, but then the child would say, well, I wouldn't have a high vis vest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> True. Now, all, all good. So, Brian, can we have you to read out that special scripture once again? Willingly. A pertinent reminder of uh, Christ God's love for us. Indeed it is. From Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, which is, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption well, thanks very much to Brian for coming in. And uh, as you're here, we'll come right down to the uh, edge and close by to where the waves are breaking onto a sandy, slightly rocky shore. Uh, because there's some of these are the flood defences. I'm looking out to sea to see whether I can see any dolphins, and as yet, nothing. But uh, we live in hope. Now, the second community element that we have is all about parish nursing. Parish nursing is a really a great uh, institution all the way across the UK and uh, it's not just looking at uh, medical but it's actually looking at whole person healing uh, and it's a non-judgmental way uh, and uh, indeed a, a really holistic way of giving people company, uh, giving people just that extra bit more. Uh, that parish nurses are not in any way, shape or form uh, an alternative to regular doctors or nurses, but they are there much more for the community. Uh, they're operated through local churches and uh, we'll be finding out a little bit more about the website. Uh, you'll get a feel and understanding of the work and you'll see what they do having an amazing impact on individuals, churches and communities. Uh, and uh, in actual fact, we're, I'm just getting ready a post for our website, uh, which is uh, visit.g4g.org.uk, and that post will tell you uh, the website and indeed uh, hopefully give you a list of parish uh, nurses nearby. Uh, so I'll try and get the link up for that. But uh, certainly in the area, we've got Berry Hole Parish Church, Sheddixley Baptist Church, Gilcomston Church, Queen Street Parish Church, Colts Parish Church, Merrifield West Care Home, Parish Nursing Ministries UK, of course, the Church of Scotland, uh, St Andrew's Parish Church, Monny Musk Parish Church, um, James Tyrrell Centre, Presbytery of Aberdeen, Steeple Church, and that's down uh, in Dundee, uh, St Margaret's Church in Dundee, uh, Church of Scotland in Edinburgh, St Andrew's Church in St Andrew's, uh, St Mary's Catholic Church in Lynn Lithgow and uh, Rubislaw Park Care Home uh, in Aberdeen. So these are just a few of the places and we'll try and make sure that there are links available and you can actually go directly there. You'll be able to see a map of uh, parish churches nearby, uh, which I find uh, incredibly useful. Anyway, we've got some more music for you and uh, this next uh, track that we're going to be playing for you uh, is Amazing Grace. Now, this is not just a pre-record. Uh, this is something that uh, recorded uh, this last week here on last Thursday in Aberdeen. I came across a friend, Ian Carney, who I used to know from days back when he used to play at uh, Aberdeen... Uh, that's the Aberdeen uh, Mission. And... Uh, that it used to be really good on a Monday evening. Uh, people used to be able to come in to Gerard Street pa Baptist Church and have a meal, uh, be able to hear about the gospel, and uh, but also just talk to volunteers. And it, it was a great evening, uh, and we used to do that every Monday. Uh, my colleague Simon used to be involved, even standing at the sink. He really enjoyed himself. Uh, but anyway, Ian Connor used to come in and... Uh, so now he's uh, away from Aberdeen, but he was in Aberdeen and uh, he was singing Amazing Grace. And uh, this comes really, I suppose, as a series now, not so much Ian Carney, but we're calling it Street Sounds. We're taking the station out into the street. We're taking microphone out into the street and recording people, uh, recording uh, 
wonderful sounds it could be bird sound it could be environmental sounds but it could also be people worshipping and uh, talking to people so we're calling it street sounds have a listen to these street sounds make your mind up and you'll be able to hear these street sounds actually on our podcast site available from our website podcast.g4g.org.uk well coming out into the environment isn't just a uh a good opportunity for a walk not only do you get fresh air but you actually get to see some of the wildlife and at, right at the moment by way of the wildlife i'm hopefully thinking about dolphins so if there are any dolphins coming we'll be able to report on that and the other thing that uh, we're going to be reporting on is the amount of insects we've got quite a few insects uh, butterflies tortoiseshell butterflies small tortoiseshell butterflies that i've seen already um, and one of the things that my wonderful wife Helen has been up to today is uh, setting out moth traps and uh, she's also been able to report that uh, for a certain site up D-side that she saw three Kentish glory and uh, we'll try and get a picture of those. Uh, we've also got the likes of Skylarks uh, going above us and it's just such a great opportunity to come out here close by to the coast and uh, see the waves breaking on the shoreline around Aberdeen. You can hear the sound of the sea uh, and it really does make quite a difference. So take a walk on the wild side. Well, this is the Community Elements Show and uh, we've come out and about uh, to give a little bit more of a flavour of Aberdeen, some of its history, some of its wildlife. I'm looking out and uh, seeing some eider ducks out here just now. They make quite an unusual sound. To the right of me I've got uh, the Girdleness Lighthouse which is th 37 metres high and uh, it was actually built in about 1833 and automated. Still very necessary but probably less so because of uh, the amount of automation on ships but it's there because sometimes technology doesn't always work as it should. Uh, the lighthouse itself has a focal range of uh, 22 nautical miles. Now we've been uh, out here looking at a pod of uh, about five dolphins which have come around from the lighthouse and uh, we believe are feeding on a show of fish uh, just off the breakwater here. And looking out at that, uh, I have seen some uh, tail flips and uh, I gather the dolphins have been breaching. We'll be going around to Torrey Battery in just uh, a few moments and finding out from the RSPB a little bit about what's been seen during the week. The wonderful sound of Skylarks ending our, uh, my little walk around uh, the Girdleness uh, Peninsula, uh, just uh, overlooking Aberdeen Harbour. And uh, I could have easily stayed there for a lot longer, uh, really got into it and uh, seen a lot more by way of the dolphins. Uh, there's a show to produce, but uh, it was a, a really wonderful time uh, and uh, certainly well recommended. Just go out there on a day like this. I mean, why stay in? Just uh, get out and enjoy while I was there, I also saw a the first uh, peacock butterfly I'd seen for this particular season. Uh, so that was on a willow uh, tree as well. Really, really fantastic and great. Uh, I did speak to uh, folks briefly at the RSPB Dolphin Watch and they said the dolphins have been really active today, in, even in and around the harbour. Just uh, that little time when I was there, I didn't really see a lot and then Going around the side of the breakwater, I was able to see the dolphins. Uh, and uh, although the water was a little bit rough, I still managed to see something of them. The, the dolphins are there each day, but uh, the RSPB Dolphin Watch are only there uh, Thursday through until Sunday.
This is Gospel for Grampian. It's coming up to half past the hour. Uh, I trust that you've enjoyed this. We're uh, getting uh, ready some posts online so you'll be able to uh, catch up with uh, what's been going on and uh, we'll put links and things on there that, that's uh, coming very soon as well as well as a uh, a little bit of a soundscape uh, from today so you'll get to hear the lovely water and you'll get to hear some more of the skylarks uh, and just get a, a flavor of uh, what I enjoyed a little bit earlier on today. Well, here's Sarah Sadler coming up with I Am A New Creation. Do listen in this evening as we have our Power Hour. And our Power Hour this evening is uh, God's Love, Our Response. Here's Sarah Sadler. Have a great weekend. And this programme goes out again Saturday and Sunday, 12pm to 1pm. And uh, also you can hear individual community elements on the uh, Community Best Shows uh, at uh, 7 a.m. in the morning during the week and also as podcasts as well. Do listen out for that. Our website, as always, visit.g4g.org.uk. Bye for now.